last few weeks. We've just been doing so much work getting it ready and, and I think it's three weeks, Christmas will be on us. And um, yeah, I'm just preparing the bike because we're planning to go out for two weeks. Our, uh, our trip will be um, going from Gold Coast to Tangaluma. So what we've, what we've lacked so far with the boat is being able to keep the batteries, the house battery charged. Um, so when we're going out, we sort of, unless I run the engine, which I've had to, um, the fridge will, with only one deep cycle battery at the moment, will only probably last just over 24 hours, you know, by the time we have our house lights on and we're charging phones and video cameras up and, and laptops and tablets and all the other bits and pieces that you have on board with you. Um, so what, I'm, what we're doing, uh, what I've bought on the internet there, um, was basically uh, some davits. So that's them here. Um, originally, they actually started off 400 millimeters. I hope you see all this. Uh, 400 mil longer. So it was on both sides. So what I've done, because they're a universal thing, so I've actually cut this much off, and we have little mounting brackets here, which I put in here, and we just screw to the uh, to the deck. Unfortunately, I can't nut and bolt it just with the McGregors. Um, they sort of have basically your deck area. I can't get in there. You know, I'm not going to start cutting holes in the boat just so I can put nuts and bolts in. But there'll be another a frame will come off here, hopefully, um, onto the back of the boat, and that'll also give it good support. But this is basically going to be for my solar panels. Um, I chased around everywhere through friends of mine, phone numbers, emailing people sending my drawings off um, to what I wanted, sort of thing. And at the end of the day, it probably I think it probably would have cost me about $1,500 to $2,000 um, to get what I've got here made up. And then I was on one of our, um, our Facebook um, Facebook pages that I'm a part of, um, South East Queensland, 26 McGregor. Um, and a fellow said, he came up with, why build it when you can buy it? And he gave me a link to this website, which I'll hopefully try and get for you. Um, and basically, so I could just buy this ready-made. And I think it was the frame alone. It's got uh, like the rocket launchers for the for the fishing rods if you need them. So I mean, they fit fishing boats and, and anything and everything. And basically, you just cut it to size. You know, so it all comes in pieces. So these two little pieces, you put them in, and that's basically rub uh, plastic things you push in there. Happy days. And I just use basically the end of my hammer, um, the timber part, right here actually. Probably a rubber hammer would be better, but you know, hey, didn't have one on, didn't have one on hand, did I? So, um, yeah, and so we just whack them in gently. One thing I did notice with these ones, um, when I was actually cutting them, uh, I'm not sure whether it's on this one or the other one, probably the other one, on the outside, it's all aluminium, but whatever the coating that they put on, I actually started to scratch them. And that does my head in um, because it's only going to get, it's never going to get better than what it is brand new. And so what I've got here is I've got an old pair of pants. So that's what I'm going to put down in future sort of thing. So um, doing everything in the shade, I don't have the um, luxury of having a, a shed, I suppose. I'm getting eaten by horse flies. But yeah, so what, what they came out with was to attach these things because they're just basically put in and they're actually pretty tight um, they came up with they've got these little screws okay well, they're probably great um, but what I want is basically because I'm putting a solar panel on here it's quite a large one <clears throat> I want this thing to stay on the boat so I don't want to have to take anything off I don't want to have to take the solar panel off anything at all so what I've come up with is a love nut and bolt well, it's a stainless steel ones. Um, hopefully they won't react with the aluminium. Uh, we'll soon see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill. Um, where are we? Pre-drill. So I've got heaps of, heaps of drill bits in my shed. My little shed down the backyard here. But you know what? See the, the width of that. I buy the width of that. I don't have to run down the back there with a little tape measure going, geez, is that right? Is that right? And then drill them and it's wrong. I want it to be exact sort of thing. So um, yeah, this is what we're up to so far. Um, 
It's going to be another 30 odd degree day here in um, South East Queensland, so um, just trying to keep my hat on, stay out of the sun as much as possible, and just do what I can do um, before it gets too hot today because it's, it's going to be a scorcher. You know. Another little tip I'll show you. I learned this many years ago actually. Um, so I bought this hacksaw blade. I've got heaps of hacksaw blade, uh, hacksaws, right? Um, they're the old school ones probably, where they have the, the thin frame, you know, and you screw that up. You always notice that your blade wobbles and stuff like that. So I mean, it was, it was 30 bucks, this thing. And it clips in, the blade's nice and tight. But I'll give you a little trick. So, the way we were probably always taught, um, most saws you get, like wood saws and stuff, I'm from the construction, in construction industry originally. Um, you know, you cut down and your, the blades are facing towards you, cutting down into it sort of thing. If you want to do finer work, turn your blade backwards, okay? Give it a go at home, right? So, when I'm cutting through this, I don't have the luxury of having a, a drop saw where I can cut it and it's going to be perfect. If you have that, go for that way, of course. Um, but if you ever notice that when you're cutting, the pushing forward, the pushing motion is a lot rougher than when you draw back. So that's why when I'm cutting, the actual cutting part is actually facing backwards. And you'll find, give it a go, you know, you'll, you'll soon see, um, everyone's different, but when you're cutting backwards through aluminium, it's a lot smoother, it's a lot smoother cut than trying to hack through it. You know, because you can find you hack through it, you'll end up with a billion burrs around it, and, um, and you might get a bit wobbly too, so, a bit of info there. A lot of people probably at home going, yeah, let me know that. But, yeah, give it a shot anyway. Well, we'll keep you updated, we'll um, get to the next stage of this, eh? Okay, all done. Sweet. Alright, so what I've done is nut and bolted it. You can see the nuts there. Bolts all the way through. Now that, that looks super sexy. Okay. That, I know, is not going to come apart. Because I'm going to nut and bolt the cross members over too. So it's going to be a solid frame. One thing I did notice with these ones is, and I only, actually wasn't in the instructions, like to give you the heads up. What I notice is you can see these, whether you can see it, but the mounting brackets here, they're actually on an angle, a slight angle. Now I might change this angle to suit the boat, because every boat's going to be different. But what I have done is basically facing the angle inside so it leans in, because obviously you don't want it leaning out. So one thing to keep aware of, as I don't show you, but got a slight little bevel to it which I imagine would be having to face in yourself. So, as I said before, put the nut and bolts in, feel a lot happier about that. I'll show you the difference. Okay, so these are the little rubber screws, hopefully you can see that one, that they want me to put into here. Okay, so that's by the time you get through the metal that's got that much bite to it. What I've done uh, is actually 40 mil stainless steel. Um, I think it's 5 mil diameter, all the way through. Washer on each end, of course, with a little nut. Um, I think you know which is going to hold a lot better. If it blows, winds, boats on the trailer. I'm doing 80 k's down the highway. Don't want them to come apart. What do you reckon? I think I've done pretty good. Pretty good for a home job, anyway. So we do, we get to the next stage now, I suppose. I think probably the next one is, I'll put it back on the boat, which I've been up there multiple times getting the right lengths. Um, when I originally started cutting it, um, I don't actually have it here. Um, but what I did is I went down in increments. So okay, I took the whole big frame up there, it was massively tall. And um, 
I took, uh, what was it, I think uh, 150 mil off at first up. Okay, so I cut both down, 150 mil measured from the ends, this is only doing one, and I just cut it down. Jump back up there again, looked, still too high. You know what, I'd much rather go, especially just with the first one, first side, in little increments, get it right, so it looks super sexy, looks really good up there, then cut it off and go, oh, shit, you know, it's too short, because I'll never get that metal back, you know what I mean? I'll never get that back, so, just cut it off, cut it off, once I found, I actually ended up, I think it was 400 mil, I ended up cutting off it, but uh, this is what I mean, I did three, three lots of cuts on the one side, just to get it right, so, because obviously, you trail sailors, the mask goes down, uh, it hangs out the back, exactly where this is going to be, um, I need this thing lower than what the mast is sitting in its, in its cradle at the moment, obviously, makes sense, doesn't it? So, but it, what I'm saying is if you cut too much off, ain't no coming back, so, it all goes on where, I mean, I cut 400 off it, but look at your boat, look at where you want to mount it. Um, you might have a different, totally different idea of where I'm mounting it, okay? So this is what I'm saying, measure your own boat up, always. Um, it's good to go off people, um, but yeah, always measure it up and, and you won't go too far wrong. You just go little bits, little bits. You know, I'm sitting here with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee um, in the shade, no stress. Kids are out and about at the moment with mum. Um, and that's the best way to do it. Nice quiet time. Get it done. And um, should be done correctly when you have something like this. It's nice and solid. And I, I actually didn't mention before there. Um, the rig here, mind you, it was a lot longer and everything like that. And when you see it, you'll be surprised on how cheap it was. Uh, it cost me, what was it, I think, offhand, probably out a few dollars, but about $176. That's including one dollar insurance to make sure it came here in one piece, um, and literally it was here in four days, um, which is just amazing, absolutely amazing. Four days. Um, so I don't have to take the boat anywhere. Um, I don't have to run around to manufacturers, listen to excuses. Oh, it's going to be a hard job. They always tend to shake their heads um, when you go to uh, people that need to make stuff. Um, this way, I'm sitting at home. Doing it myself, I think, I mean, you probably agree with me, you probably get your own little pleasure out of it too, just knowing that you've done it yourself. When people rock up to the boat, they can say, you know, hey, I built this. Well, I put it together. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so what I've done now is, um, I've taken these things off, they're the little mounting brackets. Um, what I've done is I've, I've had the whole bracket set up here, but what I'm going to do now is um, I've put these on here, just done a little pencil mark, so hopefully that should be able to rub off. And um, away we go, and I'll uh, pre-drill these holes so I can get some screws in. I'm going to do one first and um, see how well that holds, rather than pre-drill everything and find out the holes are no good. So. This is the exciting times. We'll see how we go, eh? Okay, so what I've done is um, I've basically just dummy screwed them in um, just to make sure that the frame's sitting where I want it to do. Um, now what I'll do is I'll actually retake the screws out and, um, and put silicon in them, really seal it up, pump it full, um, and then screw it back on. And um, that's one David already set up. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the screws. Um, I think I said earlier there, I'd normally use um, you know, nut and bolts and stuff like that, but I just can't get into that compartment. So I've gone for it's high grade uh, marine stainless steel, a little bit of a difference. You can see the thread on that, nice and thick. Eh? Even though the fiberglass is probably only, I don't know, I'm guessing probably 10 mil thick, something like that. Um, if I can get it in there, happy days you know I didn't want to go too long but I just wanted to make sure that it would go through all, all the, the gel coat and the fiberglass and everything like that and have a good bite anyway well, we'll um, undo it all again now and silicon it up seal it all up under the screws bit under the um, under here 
as well, bit of silicon in there, nice good sealing, um, and we'll put it back on. And as you can see, I've mounted the uh, brackets on, two screws on each. So a little bit of silicon. Uh, you know, in the past I've actually used, like spat on my finger and that, cleaned it up. I'm going to try something a bit different, so much of it. Um, when, once it dries out, I'm actually just going to cut it with a knife, a Stanley knife, and just um, like a razor blade, and just see if I can get that off. Because when I've done stuff like this before and you smear it, it's, it smears the fibre out, so it gets to be a real bugger to get off. Okay, so you can see I'm uh, doing this by myself, so what I've done is I'm straightening it up, so I've put a, uh, the pink rope in between, just basically pulling it together, and what I'm going to do now is. Um, Go get the pipe, measure one side up, probably the lower one, and um, connect it up. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. If you're uh, wondering how warm it is today, uh, yesterday when I was um, putting it all together, all the bars and that, I think I said about 30 degrees, uh, she hit uh, 35 out here. So yeah, very, very warm. Uh, so it'd be pretty much the same today. Hey guys, a bit of a run through, a little bit of a jump forward, so done all the drilling, we I put the frame together on the ground, which you would have seen. Uh, I've got the solar panel up, um, we've got support riggers, I actually added this little bar down here, stainless steel, instead of this, all this is aluminium. So I've done that stainless steel, just needed to get a bit of, a um, bit more strength, because there's a lot of weight hanging out the back there. So I'm even thinking about probably running another bar down from here down to here. Um, just play that a bit by ear though, you know, because I don't want to have to take this thing down um, when I'm uh, going to and from the water. So got about a 40 minute drive from here to the water, to the Gold Coast, and yeah, we'll get it all uh, all done. But it's looking pretty good. Uh, what I've done here, don't mind the mess of the boat, because I've been in and out of it like you wouldn't believe. Um, so what I did was I just basically ran the cable down, you can see the cable there, ran that down all the way down here and there was already a hole down here at the bottom of the boat so um, I just fed it through. Um, this panel here, uh, this was a fold out panel originally um, which I bought off uh, Full Drive Supercenter there in Australia. Um, I forget what it costs exactly. Had it for a little bit now and so what I did was I actually made it into a solid panel so I put aluminium framing uh, 90 degree bends put it underneath flipped one around so I could find the bolt holes get something happening there and also put it on the back there um, obviously so it, it can't fold you know originally I was gonna set it up the other way but it's actually longer that way and I feel that's a pretty big overhang already, so um, didn't really want it going any further out the back of that boat. But she's connected up, I've connected the solar charger up, I've got two dual batteries now, and um, through the solar controller, you can actually see each stage as it goes. So it's, I'm uh, super stoked, ready to rock and roll. Ready for uh, two weeks on the water, away we go. So here's hoping that you guys um, enjoyed this episode, and I mean, if you did, share it to a friend. If um, you know, if they're look, if yourself or your friends are looking to anyone that you know looking to set up solar panels, um, all that sort of setup, even davits for a boat, um, you know, share this channel. Have a bit of a look, and guys, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like the page if if you found this informative, and by all means. If you can see anything that, hey, I would have done differently, or hey, that's a good idea, or bad idea for that matter, let me know in the comments. Because I always love to uh, hear comments from people. And, um, yeah, happy days. But just remember, it's it's about what you do, and living the dream is, is what we try and do the best we can. Happy days, guys. Happy sailing.